Just like the street lights lit this time Like a fire in a blaze, gotta burn it right, down here we are, folks. Can't be afraid to leave this out We got this far, don't know how Reporting from South Africa. Tuesday, March 19th, 2024. Salve, servus, benvenuti, benvenu. Grüß Gott. Cheers. Welcome back, folks. Chris here live in central Pennsylvania on this Tuesday, March 19th, 2024. I hope you find yourself well wherever you are around the world, whether it's Andre Jacobs in the People's Republic of China, or it's, I don't know, Peter down in Kiwiland, New Zealand, or I don't know, maybe it's Fiona up in the UK along with Hendo and others. What about down there in South Africa, where we've got so many viewers? Uh, let's see. Mark Meyerberg is down there in South Africa. Welcome, Mark. Hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to the program. Was not doing a broadcast. I have many, many, many things going on. And um, I had to deal with some crises this morning. So I was able to get back here and get some news to present some news to you and some analysis. Uh, things get a little haywire and crazy in South Africa. Lawsuit going on today, a case taken to court about the emblem used by the new Jacob Zuma MK, Mkonto Wisizwe Party, appropriating that from the Liberation Era movement's armed wing. Well, I don't know if the ANC registered that trademark or not, but that court case, um, they're reserving judgment, so they didn't decide today. The court will decide later on. So that's out there. Also going to talk a little bit about some um, developments in politics here in the States, uh, a little bit of challenge for the United States in Africa when it comes to security, and a few other things going on. But welcome back, folks. It is a pleasure to chat with you once again on this day. It's uh, chilly here. The temperature has dropped a full 30 degrees Fahrenheit, almost 40 degrees, a massive drop in temperature in just a day or two. We were wearing shorts and walking around quite warm a day or two ago, and now it's quite chilly just a couple of days later. Teresa's here, Vilma Rasmus, Nick Muller, Polly, the brains behind the operation, uh, Emil Therrett, uh, Trevor Bush. Did I say Nick Muller right? I think I did. Vilma said Keith Alderson's in from Coventry, the place that because we didn't want to jeopardize the fact that we had the Enigma machine, the Allies allowed to be bombed. Churchill made that decision that they would not stop the German attack on Coventry because it would give away the fact that we had cracked the Enigma machine. A lot of lives lost, but a lot of lives potentially saved. Rod Lofeld is here, Laudi Monday in from the Cape, and Fiona's in from the UK. Wolf, good to see you again. Susan Koster, welcome Susan. Mark Myberger mentioned, there's Petra. Hey Petra. And uh, Ken Aronson's always in the background. Good to see that, Ken. And uh, whom have I missed? Shawnee is back. Welcome. Uh, you're welcome for my time, Shawnee. I won't go a full hour and a half today. Um, so if you've got to run, don't worry about that. Hey, Ronell and Ashley Engelbrecht. I won't go the full hour and a half. I really, 32 degrees here in the house in Feltsruf. Well, yeah, it's 32 degrees here as well. But that's Fahrenheit, not Celsius. <laughs> In Feltruf. No, in Feltruf, uh, yeah, 30 degrees Celsius. It's uh, 30 degrees Fahrenheit here. So <laughs> we're getting the same reading. <laughs> Actually, uh, it's 20 degrees according to that in here, but that's inside. <laughs> it's 32 degrees. That's in Celsius, by the way. That is in Celsius because my audience is around the world. So I put that temperature in Celsius up there. Anyway, folks, uh, let's uh, get to things. I hope you're all well. What's going on? Anything exciting happening in your side of the world? All right, um, YouTube is buffering again here for me. It's, it doesn't affect the broadcast. It's just my internal stuff, so kind of frustrating. Um, yeah. 
Let's see, where am I at here? Back to that. Okay, so the Speaker of Parliament uh, had her home raided, and this is what happens in political opponents, but the ruling party controls the justice system, so it is interesting to see, whoops, it is interesting to see, that's weird, how did that happen? It is interesting to see, there we go, to see that Nosesiwe Mapisa Nakula's house was raided. Yep, Johannesburg home of Parliamentary Speaker Nakula was raided Yesterday morning, the National Prosecuting Authority investigating director conducted the raid. Came after the DA laid a complaint against her with the Joint Committee on Ethics and Members' Interest earlier this month after she was named in an affidavit submitted to the investigative director by the owner of Umkombe Marine, a company responsible for transporting South African National Defense Force cargo for military missions. Back when she was defense minister, tied up in allegations of corruption, an ANC politician corrupt? No, that's impossible. This is the party of liberation. We brought you freedom. We ended the evil era of Jan van Riebeck and Hendrik Verwerd. How could we possibly be corrupt? We would never steal from the citizens of South Africa. We are here for black liberation and black liberation only, not for self-enrichment or gain. No. Who told you that? All right. Yeah, please hit the like button, folks. Nothing to see here. Moving right along, yes. Female police officer politely asked the reporter from News 24 who went to the property on Tuesday to move away from the property. The officer emerged from the guard room near the guard gate and was joined by a man who came from the house. The identified man identified himself as Six. <laughs> six. Uh, can you move? The people you are looking for are not here. Well, that's the role of the security. Um, need to protect member of parliament, so fair enough. Well, high voter turnout expected for South Africa's May 29th election, as well as an extremely long list of parties to check off. Yeah, and who will be at the top of that, of course? The African National Congress, of course. So, um, these are the challenges confronting the IC. not to mention the possibility of no electricity or stuffed ballot boxes. Who knows what? The Electoral Commission of South Africa anticipates two factors pose challenges for the upcoming polls, higher voter participation and longer ballot papers. They believe the longer ballot papers and anticipate high voter turnout will result in long queues and longer time taken to vote, count ballots, and declare results. According to Parliament's Portfolio Committee on Home Affairs, the IEC said that the contingency plans to address the expected challenges. Hmm. What are those contingency plans, IEC? Yeah, well, you are likely to see a lot more people go to the polls unless, unless the ANC is successful in its court bid to remove the Mkonto Misizwe party from the ballot. Then you will see a massive number of people simply not go to the polls, possibly some civil disobedience and even violence. Mkonto Misizwe trademark judgment on ANC to declare MK registration unlawful reserved. Uh, Earl Weideman, I reported on that story over a day ago that FMB closed Zuma's bank account uh, that had 7.8 million rand in it from VBS. I did report on that yesterday. So, reserve judge was handed down today during a sitting in the Supreme Court of Appeal in Bloemfontein. This reserve judgment comes after ANC and MK have been at loggerheads over the registration of the party, which the ANC claims is illegal, and the logo, which clearly has been appropriated from the ANC. Well, it never should have happened. What are we talking about? We're talking about the karaoke night. That's right, when a member supporting Zuma grabbed the microphone. Mwezi Zuma started singing there. Yeah, that never should have happened. The royal family of the Zulu distancing themselves from it. Amabuto lambast Duma for utterly disrespectful mic grabbing. The deplorable and utterly disrespectful were the words used to describe the mic grabbing incident and event held to commemorate the 110th anniversary of the death of the late King Dinuzulu Kakechiweo in KwaZulu Natal. ANC Provincial Chairperson Siboniso Duma grabbed the mic from Amazulu traditional Prime Minister Tula Sizwe Butulezi. Hmm. And, um, Duma must apologize. They say the despicable actions displayed the ANC provincial chairperson, Siboniso Duma, who grabbed the mic, should be frowned upon by all South Africans. We're outraged and appeal to the king to find comfort in what happened. We say sorry to him. What happened there should never have happened. It happened at the wrong place at the wrong time. Ooh, is the ANC disintegrating? Indeed it is. Well, rates are going up for South Africans. If you live in South Africa, you're paying more for water, for electricity, for roads, for things that don't even happen. Here it comes. Are you ready for it? Here in Joburg alone, Johannesburg, the city of gold, Igoli, the city of gold. Hmm. 
your rates are going up. Electricity, 10.7%. Water, 7.7%. They don't give you any water. Sewage, 7.7%. Refuse, 5.9%. And rates in general up 4.8%. My question about this, ladies and gentlemen, is why are you paying for rubbish removal? Just do what they do in Durban. Dump it on the side of the road, right? Isn't that how it's disposed of? Yeah. Well, students have set fire to a lecture hall. Well, that's really good. That's the kind of students we want at university. Students set fire to lecture venue at uh, University of KZN's chemistry faculty. They're confirmed that a probe is underway following an arson attack at the Westville campus today. In video clips of the incident, students can be seen pelting large rocks and stones at the officers on the scene. In the second clip, smoke can be seen emanating from the building. It's alleged that at midday today, two, one or more people set fire to the lecture venue at the chemistry building. So this is my question. Why aren't these people rounded up, put in jail where they belong? Why do you tolerate this sort of violent civil behavior, ANC? Well, the Springboks will be playing another test. Now we're up to 12 test matches this summer season. Well, for South Africans, it's fall, winter. But uh, the Northern Hemisphere's summer season sees the Springboks traveling to Murray Field to take on, actually, it's a winter by the time it happens, November, take on Scotland. In what's turning into a busy international season for the reigning world champion, the Springboks will visit Murray Field as part of Scotland's four autumn international tests in November. The back-to-back -back winners, the William Webb Ellis Trophy, will face Scotland on November 10th, which means we have now 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 games, as I said. The year-end tests are Sunday, November 10th against Scotland, and then either the 16th or 17th against England at Twickenham. Exciting stuff, folks. I'd love to be in Scotland in November. Wouldn't that be cool? Murray Field, Edinburgh, Sunday, November 10th. That would be so awesome to be at that game. That game just added Scotland Rugby announced that. So obviously there's no tickets yet. I would love to be there for that game. Edinburgh is a nice town. Sounds like a plan after the election here. Well, ESCOM Hydro and gas power projects among the government's top 12 priorities this year. Oh, that's strange. Um, I'm confused. Did I not get the memo from the ANC? The top projects for the ANC this year are ESCOM's Gas and Hydro among their top 12 prioritized projects. I mean, I have here a list in front of me that says the ANC's priorities are to ensure that the MK doesn't compete in the elections, number one. Number two, make sure the Palapala story is gone. That's the second. Number three, do not begin any criminal proceedings against the Zondo Commission accused. Okay, that's number three. Number four, Grift more money from the cowardly leftists running the West for the just energy transition. That's four. Number five, steal all the money. Oh, sorry. That's, yeah. So I'm just reading from the Lutuli houses. Um, you know, that's their memo. Those are their top priorities. How could it be ESCOM? When, when, did, when did ESCOM become a top priority for, when did ESCOM become a top priority for the ANC? Really? Actually, that's a video I should do. Ladies and gentlemen, breaking news. ESCOM is a top priority for the ANC. Really? After carnage, death, people dying in hospitals because backup generators didn't work and the respirators failed and surgeries weren't performed and appendix burst and people died from cardiac arrest when there are no paddles. Clear! There's no charge. Mm. Now ESCOM is a priority. Now is ESCOM. Springboks play three times to Wickenham and be sold out. Yeah, that's probably true. Right. Um, well, folks, I'm going to warn you now. The racists are at it again. Are you listening closely? Those evil white Western people trying experimental jabs on black Africans. They experiment on Africans because they don't respect the Africans. Yes, yes, yes. It's happening again, this time in South Africa. Mzanzi, Azania. South Africa. This is where it's happening now. Those evil Westerners testing their jabs, their vaxes on unsuspecting innocent Africans. Yes. Let's talk about this story. Mm. <laughs> Huge tuberculosis vaccine trial starts in South Africa. It could live the first new jab in over a century. Wow. 
The first jabs and a much-anticipated clinical trial of an experimental tuberculosis vaccine have been administered at a clinical trial at the University of Witwatersrand in Johannesburg. Up to 20,000 people are anticipated to take part in the study, according to a study sponsor, the Bill and Melinda Gates Medical Research Institute. Ha 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 ha! We have the proof! Bill and Melinda Gates are behind it! Evil! Evil racist from Microsoft. The experimental vaccine called M72 slash ASO1E. Let's say that in phonetic. The Mike 72 slash Alpha Sierra Oscar 1 Echo, or M72 for short, made waves back in 2018 and 2019 when it was found to be around 50% effective at preventing people with latent TB from falling ill. In June of 2023, it was announced that after some delays, $550 million in illicit money taken from poor people in the third world have been secured. Hmm. Wow. Wow. Phase three for the jab. Evil taking advantage of poor, unsuspecting black folks. Ladies and gentlemen, why would why would the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation be testing field trials, human trials, on a tuberculosis jab. Why might that be? Um, why South Africa? Should they do it in central Pennsylvania? Let's see. Let me add up the number of cases of tuberculosis we have here. Uh, let's see. There are zero in York County, zero in Cumberland County. Um, Dauphin County has three cases of tuberculosis. I'll go through Pennsylvania, 67 counties, and we probably won't hit 100 people who have tuberculosis. I'm being facetious. However, in South Africa, there are over half a million people currently suffering from tuberculosis, a large number of people with tuberculosis. It makes sense that this jab would be given trials there. Evil people. Well, the Six Nations Tournament, let's see what The Guardian, the leftist newspaper in the UK, has to say about awards. The Six Nations is over, and in Ireland have won back-to-back -back Six Nations tournament titles. Six Nations 2024 awards, their writers on the highlights of the tournament. Well, the player of the tournament, so, tempted to say Antoine Dupont, um, but he wasn't there. Or Tommy Raphael. But Ireland won the title again, and James Lowe is among the Green Machine's most vital cogs, says Robert Kitson. Michelle Lamaro says, um, there were showier players, speedier players, stronger players, and more skillful players, but Italy's captain was absolutely indomitable, says Andy Bull, Michelle Lamaro. Uh, Gerhard Meager, Ger Gerard Meager says, uh, Tommaso Menoncello. Bundiaki is probably the correct answer, while Francois Crowe has a strong claim, but Menoncello enjoyed a fantastic tournament. He did. Menoncello was amazing in the Six Nations. Uh, Italy's captain joked that he's getting old after Saturday's victory in Cardiff, but it does feel as if Michel Lamaro has waited an age for a team to match his example. Agreed. All right, match of the tournament. France versus England, the last one. Hmm, interesting. Interesting. England 23, Ireland 22. I think that was a good choice for a game, but they're saying France versus England, the first one there. So, hmm. Favorite moment? Um, well, there's a lot of stuff to go with there. Biggest surprise? It would have to be Italy beating France and Lille if they beat them. Yep. Everyone knew Italy were improving, but their rejuvenated confidence since the World Cup has been wonderful to behold. Agreed. England's win against Ireland aside, the way Italy fought back after losing their first two games and then going seven points down to France and Lille showed a resilience no one outside the team can really have known they had in them. I expect there to be a World Cup hangover, but I didn't think it would be for France, and I did not see them being beaten at home by Ireland so emphatically. It was... It is to Italy's great credit that the manner of their victory over Wales wasn't particularly surprising at all. There you go. All right. So here's the team of the tournament. Danilo Fischetti of Italy, Dan Sheehan, and Uni Antonio. In the middle, Mario Etoja, Joe McCarthy. In the backs as well, Caitlin Doris, Ben Earl, Tommy Raphael, Nolan Garrick. And then the backs, that was the forwards of the backs. George Ford of England, Tommaso Menoncello, Juan Ignacio Brex from Italy, James Lowe, Tomas Ramos, and Damien Pinot. That's their team of the match from The Guardian. Well, there you go. Oh, we lost a bunch of people talking about rugby. <laughs> the United States is weighing options in Africa now that Joe Biden's failed foreign policy has cost us yet another foothold in a critical location as Niger has kicked America out. So the idiots running our national security establishment have screwed the pooch yet again. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin 
speaks with a meeting with Latvian Defense Minister Andres Sprantz. Well, he's not pictured. I was going to say, those aren't Latvians. Those two black dudes, man. They're not Latvians. The Pentagon is working with Niger officials seeking a way for U.S. troops to stay in the country following a weekend directive that they get out. So what this means, I'll tell you what this means. Niger wants lots of money. Money, money, money. That's right. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Hmm. Well, famine in northern Gaza, according to a leading hunger expert, famine is imminent in northern Gaza, where around 300,000 people still remain and at risk of happening any time between now and May, according to a new report by experts who are the world's leading authority on hunger. The report from the Integrated Food Security Phase Classification, never heard of them, or IPC, concluded the entire population of the Gaza Strip, more than 2 million people, are already facing high levels of acute food insecurity. Duh. Thank you for that genius analysis. Well, Benjamin Netanyahu tells Joe Biden to foot sec, get stuffed, hit the road, Jack, and don't look back. That's right. Netanyahu rebuffs Biden and vows to press ahead with the Rafah invasion. Netanyahu acknowledges the dispute with the U.S., but says Israel will press on the Rafah. He made the remarks to Israeli lawmakers a day after speaking by phone with Joe Biden, in who the White House said had reiterated concerns that invading Rafah would be a mistake. Yes, and leaving Hamas on the battlefield would be a mistake, as we saw on October 7th. Well, Hong Kong has approved a draconian security bill, which is making the waves all over the planet in the news. Hong Kong approves new national security law that worries foreign executives. Cities officials say domestic legislation covering state secrets and foreign interference is necessary and won't affect normal business. Hong Kong lawmakers passed a bill that includes heavy punishments for foreign interference, endangering national security, and criminalizes the possession or disclosure of state secrets. Hmm, that doesn't seem unreasonable at all. However, the media are losing their mind. Understandable. It's the communists taking over. Well, the world's largest solar panel manufacturer is cutting its workforce by one-third. China's Longyi looks to slash costs as renewable energy sector faces tough headwinds from inflation. The world's largest solar panel manufacturer slashed nearly one-third of its workforce after a cost-cutting drive that included telling staff to only print in black and white fell short as a chill ripples through the renewable energy sector. It's unclear exactly how many jobs we lost at Longyi, which employed 80,000 workers at its peak last year. The renewables industry is facing significant headwinds in the fallout from Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine in 2022. Moscow's reduction in gas supplies in the continental Europe left governments scrambling to beef up domestic power generation, accelerating a shift towards renewables. However, the resulting higher energy bills pushed up inflation rates. Ah, oh, okay, so there's the truth. Whoops, hang on a second. There's the truth. When you go to renewable energy, electricity costs more, according to The Guardian. Of course, The Guardian is one of these leftist outfits that will tell you, no, 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 renewable energy is better, it's cheaper, it's safer, it's clean, it's wonderful. But they just admitted the truth. Because people are switching to renewable, which costs more, never mind the environmental impact of it, we haven't even talked about that, People aren't buying into it because it costs more than burning coal. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, the world's most populated, well, no, dirtiest cities, the world's dirtiest cities, the most polluted cities, the world's 100 worst polluted cities are located where? Europe? North America? Africa? Where are the world's 100 most polluted cities located, folks? Anybody want to guess? Anybody want to guess? Well, the world's 100 worst polluted cities are located in Asia. And 83 of them are in India alone. Yep. Look at these morning walkers there near the uh, Kartava Path near India Gate on December 9th. Look at that. Sick. All but one of the 100 cities with the world's worst air pollution last year were in Asia. With a climate crisis playing a pivotal role in bad air quality. <laughs> no, 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 It's not the climate crisis. It's not the climate crisis. It's people burning trash. It's people using factories that belch pollution and not paying a price for it in Asia. Yet we're blamed for it. They pollute their cities and we have to cut our energy consumption. We are the ones who innovate, who develop new technology for cleaner burning fuels, more efficient burning fuels, more efficient sources of energy. We are the ones who do that and we are the ones being punished with carbon credits and the just energy transition while China and India burn and pollute the world. Yeah, okay, thank you very much for that. Moving right along. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yep. 
92.5% of the 7,812 locations in 134 countries, regions, and territories that were analyzed, average air quality exceeded the World Health Organization's guidelines for particulates in the air. So it's all over. But the worst ones are, of course, in Asia. Hey, Kurtz. Well, this is a big development, folks. Mark the date, March 19th, 2024. This is a big date. Jackass Joe's administration has finally stood up to the plate, belted up, put their belt on, and dressed up like big boys, and have finally done something positive when it comes to foreign policy. Wink and blink and an odd, our incompetent Secretary of State has promised that the United States will defend the Philippines against the Chinese communists. Blinken on Manila visit confirms U.S. will defend the Philippines against armed Chinese attack. Biden hosts leaders of Japan and Philippines for first ever summit next month. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken visiting the Philippines on Tuesday reaffirmed Washington's ironclad commitment to Manila's defense in the face of rising friction with China and talked up an upcoming trilateral summit. First ever joint meeting between the leaders of Japan, the Philippines, and the U.S. will take place on April 11th. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida and Philippines President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. will travel to Washington to meet with Jackass Joe, the U.S. and Philippine officials saying, well, we have made a commitment to the Philippines. It's about time. Public. Well, outside groups. Uh, so again, I've covered this story before, but let me talk about this, folks. Oh, the Republicans are the party of big business. The Republicans, all they want are tax cuts for corporations. They don't care about the little guy. The Republicans are in the pocket. But in 2008, I revealed the truth of the matter by simply looking at Federal Election Commission public data. And that was related to Barack Hussein Obama and John McCain. In 2008, the Democrats ran breathless commercials over and over again saying that John McCain was in the pocket of big donors. John McCain was a stooge of Wall Street. John McCain got all his money from big corporations. But when you look at the figures, John McCain got about $5 million from those sorts of donors. And Barack Hussein Obama got something between 63 and 80 million, something like that. Just go look it up, folks. Yeah. So I blew the cover off this story a long time ago. Well, Donald Trump, his empire being destroyed by illegitimate, unlawful, unconstitutional, malicious prosecutions, having trouble paying his bond for ridiculous judgment against him for a crime he did not commit. That's happening to Trump. But what's happening with Jackass Joe, the man who can't climb a flight of stairs, the man who can't finish a sentence without amphetamines? What's happening with Jackass Joe? Well, over a billion dollars committed by leftist groups, a billion dollars by businesses and leftist groups. The League of Conservation Voters, among the biggest spenders on progressive causes, said it would put $120 million behind Biden and the Democrats as his Republican rivals face cash woes. A new $120 million pledge to lift President Biden and his allies will push the total expected spending from outside groups working to reelect Biden to a billion dollars this year. Ask yourself this question. Ask yourself this question. Failed foreign policy in Myanmar, in Cabo Delgado, in the Sahel with Niger, Mali, Burkina Faso, in Israel and Gaza, in Ukraine, in Afghanistan, in North Korea, in China. Failed foreign policy all over the world. Joe Biden. Inflation, doubling the cost of basic foodstuffs and energy for the average consumer here in America, despite their lies about it's three or five percent. That's a lie. That's a total lie. I'm still paying $3.69 a gallon for gasoline that cost me $1.89 a gallon just three years ago. Mm -hmm. yeah, despite that, despite the fact that this country is being invaded, millions and millions of people, more people that they know came into the country illegally last year than the population of 34 of our 50 states. A federal budget deficit of $2 trillion this year in a ludicrous budget submitted by the Biden regime of $7.4 trillion to run this country. Despite all of that, despite all of that, never mind the social nonsense, the overreach of the government, the suppression of American citizens, the suppression of the First Amendment, Constitution guaranteed rights, never mind all of those actions by this criminal rogue regime in Washington, D.C., never mind that. There are groups willing to spend $1 billion, that's 19 billion rand, to get Joe Biden back in office so he can fall down the stairs, mumble through lunch, take a lid at 10 a.m. This is absolute insanity. Absolute insanity. Republican groups are likely to spend big ahead of November as well, but it's difficult to make direct comparisons between the Democrat and Republican counterparts. Democrat and progressive organizations often announce their spending plans before they've raised the funds. 
Hmm. The pro Biden outside money originates from nearly a dozen organizations, that include climate groups, labor unions, and traditional super PACs. There are left wing groups like Move On and moderate Republicans like Republican voters against Trump. Huh. Wow. The largest spenders so far are Future Forward, a super PAC blessed by the Biden campaign that has reserved $250 million in television and digital advertising. The Service Employees International Union, which last week said it would spend $200 million to back Biden. Wow. And American Bridge, a Democratic research organization, will spend $140 million on anti-Trump advertising. And we think elections are free and fair. We actually believe that elections are free and fair with this level of corruption. I, by law, can only give like $2,500 to a political candidate. But these corrupt organizations can buy candidates with billions of dollars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Billions of dollars. Can you believe that? Billions of dollars in corrupt money. This is what McCain-Feingold brought us. McCain-Feingold is an unconstitutional piece of legislation that should be challenged and struck down. It's unconstitutional. It limits my ability to donate money to a candidate of my choosing as an individual, but it allows this dark money to flow in from these interests. So wealthy individuals form these groups to influence elections, to influence outcomes, to divert policy so that we have idiotic things like subsidies for maize so that we put ethanol in our engines and destroy our valves and our pistons and get poor energy return. So we flood the Missouri and Mississippi rivers with nitrates and phosphorus leading to algae blooms off the coast of Louisiana and destroying our environment so that we have idiotic policies like subsidies on sugar cane and sugar beets driving up the cost of sugar in this country to three times the global price so that we have idiotic policies that defend the favored interest on Wall Street for Joe Biden and Barack Obama's close associates, so that we pervert the entire political system for these clowns. Olivia Scrooby just, just subscribed. Thank you, Olivia. Yeah, this is sick and twisted. This needs to end. And why it's allowed to continue is beyond me. Well, Congress announces a deal that will avoid a shutdown resolving the Homeland Security dispute. The last sticking point in the budget has been resolved. Speaker Mike Johnson of the Republic of Louisiana announced the DHS deal in a statement saying it will allow Congress to finish funding the government for the remainder of the year. So what does that mean? Let's see what they say. Oh, they won't give us the details. <laughs> so, so you know, I tell you what, I'll tell you right now. Okay, I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going to step out on that branch. I'm going to make this, this prediction right now. Okay, here we go. Out on the branch. Here's it. You ready? This deal just gave amnesty to criminal alien invaders who violated our sovereignty and become a burden on our country for social requirements, for housing, pushing people out, and or those who commit crimes. This just gave amnesty or allowed the government to accept more criminal alien invaders over the border when the answer should be zero accepted. You watch. You watch. Let's wait and see. No details. Funny how they announce the deal, but they don't tell us what it is. Where is the transparency in government? Where is the honesty in government? It is non-existent. These people are all frauds. Well, here's an opinion piece by Perry Bacon Jr. I don't know who Perry Bacon is. He writes for the Washington Compost. Um, he says, voters of color are shifting right. Are Democrats doomed? Well, they should be doomed because their policies are anti-human. So, are so many voters of color becoming Republican that U.S. politics is on the verge of dramatic change? Maybe. Financial Times' John Byrne Murdoch wrote a thread on Twitter that went viral last week with charts showing increased Republican support with voters of color. He also published an article with the headline, American Politics is Undergoing a Radical Real, uh, Racial Realignment. Excuse me. Byrne Murdoch isn't the only person noticing these trends, and he's right. Something important is happening. In 2020, many more Latino voters voted for Trump, 37%, compared with Romney eight years earlier. 25% of Asian, Black, and Latino voters combined back Donald Trump in 2020, according to the left-leaning data firm Catalyst, while 73% favored Biden. That was a big increase from the 17% of voters of color who supported Romney in 2012. Hmm. And in the 2022 congressional elections, 41% of Asian voters voted for Republican, up from 33% in 2020. So here are the numbers. And let's zoom that up so you can see it on the screen a little bit there, folks. There you go. All right, so we can zoom up just a little bit more there. There we go. So, in 2012, about 57% of white voters voted Republican, and that number declined up to 2020, and now it's back on the surge. It's up to 57 again. Asians were over 30%. Now they're up to 41% after hitting a low of 30% in 2016 when Trump ran. Now they're at 41%. In 2012, 
Only about 5% of black voters voted for Donald Trump. And now in 2022, the figure looks to be 12%. Although I've seen figures saying it's much higher than that. So I'm not really sure where they get that data. Should Democrats be concerned? Absolutely, because they're anti-human, they're anti-constitution, their racist policies are not resonating with voters all over the country. You need a new playbook. Well, this is the playbook they come with, universal basic income. You don't work, you don't earn, you just get handed money. And of course, it comes out of other people's pockets or we get buried in debt, which leads to the eventual collapse of the country. It's morally bankrupt to just give people money. People in desperate straits, different, different times, having challenges, that's one thing. That's legitimate. People go through difficult periods, things happen. But you cannot just give people money just because they exist. That just leads to more people and more drain on resources without generating jobs, without generating tax revenue, without generating any ingenuity or entrepreneurship for growth. It is a self-defeating, idiotic idea, which the South African government embraces and apparently many governments in America. Governments across the USA are handing residents cash with no strings attached. Dozens of guaranteed income programs are propped up in cities and counties and Republicans are trying to block them. Thank goodness. Yep. Uh, Bobby Hines has been living in her modest home in Southeast Houston for 56 years, but she's struggling to meet her bills. Understandable. Everything's so expensive. Well, thank you, Joe Biden. She's one of more than 80,000 residents of Harris County, the third most populous county in the U.S., who've applied for a program, a pilot program, giving them $500 a month for nothing, just extra money. Houston is joining dozens of American cities and counties led by Democrats. They're experimenting with guaranteed income programs amid growing wealth inequality in the U.S. The program is a part of a trend at local and national level toward providing direct, largely unconditional payments to Americans for everything from pandemic relief to child assistance. And we've seen how this has been used by some people, like the lady who went down to Disneyland, took her kids down there and blew through $10,000 that she was given. Yeah. Right, as if she deserved that. When other people are actually working and can't take their kids for nice little things like that. Well, this is crazy. This is a consequence of idiotic law once again. New York allows squatters to take over your home. The homeowner was arrested after she broke the law by going to her own property that she owns. Fed up homeowner arrested after tense standoff with squatters stealing $1 million house she inherited from her parents. A New York City property owner recently ended up in handcuffs following a fiery standoff with a bunch of squatters she has been trying to boot out of her family's home. Adele Andalaro, 47, was recently nabbed after she changed the locks on a million-dollar home in Flushing, Queens that she says she inherited from her parents when they died. It's enraging. It's not fair that I, as the homeowner, have to go through this. She claims the ordeal erupted when she started the process of trying to sell the home last month but realized squatters had moved in and brazenly replaced the entire front door and locks. Fed up, she recently went to the family's home on 160th Street with a local TV outlet in tow and called a locksmith to change the locks for her. A heated camera, on-camera spat with the alleged squatters quickly unfolded and ended with some of the so-called tenants and Andalaro being led away in cuffs. In New York City, a person can claim squatter rights after 30 days of living on a property. Under the law, it's illegal for the homeowner to change the locks, turn off the utilities, or remove the tenant's belongings from the property. By the time someone does their investigation, they're working their job, it'll be over 30 days and this man will still be in my home, she said. Wow. Wow. Now, during the recent encounter, she was at the property with a deed in her hand. Wow. After changing locks, a man claiming to be on the lease, identified by the local outlet as Brian Rodriguez, returned to the property and barged through the front door. You shouldn't be trying to steal my house, a furious Andalaro yelled at him during the caught-on-camera ordeal. A flurry of 911 calls took place. Wow. In addition to her arrest, she is being forced to start an eviction filing in court to settle the landlord dispute. The ordeal is just the latest involving squatters in the Big Apple. In recent weeks after couples planned to move into a $2 million home in Douglastown, Queens, with their disabled son was derailed by a squatter who claimed to have an agreement with the previous owner. Separately, a squatter was also found to have turned a Rockaway's home into a stomach-turning house of horrors by keeping more than a dozen emaciated cats and dogs trapped inside the property. Yeah, who has rights? And I'm complaining about South Africa, you know, violating, violating property rights, abrogating them. This is what's happening in America. This is what's happening in America. This is nonsense. This, this, this scumbag criminal favoring legal system needs to be stopped. People go on vacation, come home and somebody's in their home and they can't go in the home. What the hell is that? That is dangerous. Exactly. This is insane. What will happen if Trump can't post his $454 million ridiculous bond? Hmm. This was published yesterday. 
New York Attorney General Letitia James will be free to start going after Donald Trump's prized properties if he didn't post the bond. Wow. Manhattan Supreme Court Justice Arthur Engoran ordered a hefty judgment against a real estate mogul. Watch, New York will probably try to go confiscate Trump Tower. Watch, watch, watch him do it. This is going to get ugly. Well, Unilever is finally done with the weed-smoking, wackadoodle, nonsensical leftist lunatics, Ben and Jerry. The idiots are finally being ditched. Unilever plans to spin off its ice cream business, which includes Magnum and Popsicle, and could consider a sale. They've lost their taste for ice cream. The company's staple of brands include Dove Soap, Hellman's Mayonnaise, and Tresemme. Ooh, Tresemme. Also said some 7,500 jobs will be affected as part of a restructuring program aimed at saving 800 million euros over the next three years. Yeah, but they're getting rid of Ben and Jerry's. As a consequence of the announcement, their shares rose. Ben and Jerry's, once regarded by analysts as a jewel in Unilever's crown, has turned into something of a thorn in its side. The brand, which has an independent board and its parent company, have repeatedly butted heads in recent years. In 2022, Ben and Jerry's filed a lawsuit against its parent company after Unilever sold its business in Israel without consultation. That move came after the brand halted sales of its products in Jewish settlements in the Israeli-occupied West Bank and contested East Jerusalem. <laughs> Most recently, the pair tussled with the presence of Nelson Peltz on Unilever's board. Hmm. Yikes. Because he held a position to sign a visa to the Center. The Jewish organization urged people not to buy Ben & Jerry's ice cream after the brand's independent chairwoman denounced Israel's actions in Gaza. Peltz resigned from his position at the visa Hall Center. <laughs> ben & Jerry's. Don't buy it. Chunky monkey. Tastes like crap. Well, Chicago has begun evicting criminal alien invaders, and the media aren't calling it that. They're just looking the other way for the most part. But NBC does report on this. Franklin Romero, a 29-year-old Venezuelan criminal alien invader, said someone told him just one day he had to leave by 2 p.m. Well, you aren't supposed to be in this country, so you shouldn't be there. Chicago has begun evicting some migrants from its shelters, a controversial policy that has been delayed for months but appeared haphazard. Migrants have been evicted, as well as those who face a rapidly approaching deadline, said there has been widespread confusion about the process. There's no confusion. You're illegally in this country. Get out. Well over 90% of asylum seekers are fraudulent, and the odds are that the vast majority of these people are fraudulent, all things being equal in statistics. And that's the bottom line. So Chicago is evicting these criminal alien invaders, and the left is not upset about it. Why aren't they upset about it? Once again, ladies and gentlemen, the African National Congress has reported its top 12 priorities for this year. And, of course, they claim that it is, of course, ESCOM. But we have the real report right here. Editorial commentary. This is satire for the ANC. Uh, we have the ANC's list of top priority projects for 2024. Number one is to ensure that MK does not participate in the 29 May election. Number two, ensure that all discussion of Minir Palapala's $80,000 is gone in News 24. Number, two. Number three, convince the evil racist West to give more money for the just energy transition that we can put into our pockets. Number three. Number four, number four, number four. Figure out how we can steal more money from South Africans. Yeah, that's the actual list of ANC priorities for 2024, folks. There you go. There you go. Uh, not like Bethlehem weather where they can be frolicking outside. Poor lambs. Uh, wish, we'll wish South Africa evict and deport the illegals in this country. Yeah, you got the same problem there. Yep, Ben and Jerry's, weren't they in the film City Slickers? I have no idea, Keith. No idea. Legal system these days across the world is more in favor of the criminal as opposed to the victim and or law-abiding system. You are 100% correct, Lorraine. Citizens are at a disadvantage. In South Africa, we're nice. We start renovations in winter. The roof and windows are the first to be removed. <laughs> Look, you've got a lot of interesting things about South Africa. Number one is, that's correct, uh, that you start removing the windows and the ceiling and the roofs, uh, but also you're the most romantic country in the world. Courtesy of ESCOM, everybody has a romantic candlelight dinner every night. Yep. Erica says, wow, the homeowner's arrested. Yep, 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 yep. That is ridiculous. We have all fallen victims. It took two years to get rid of an attorney renting my house with an eviction notice. Wow. That's insane. That's insane. Dishing out cash left and right when a veteran is having financial problems. He is mentally unstable. Hmm. Hmm. The UK Rwanda policy intended to send both illegal economic migrants and legal refugees there also contains agreement to take in an equal number of Rwandans than the, yeah, exactly. So it's a wash. 
<laughs> Guess you are an island, so is a bit of miss the weather, man. What's with the lambs going on there? She keeps talking about lambs. Oh, she's talking to Fiona. It's spring there, okay. Well, it's spring here too, but the temperature dropped immensely. It's what a big drop. Biden is reading from the same book as Ron Posen. Agreed. How many drugs did Mr. Magoo have aboard before the state of the union? Was? I don't know. There are some pretty strong amphetamines in that mix, I'm sure. I see that. It's an odd one as can develop later to contagious latent. Hmm. USA is opening a third war front, the Philippines. No, we're not. We are reaffirming our commitment to deterrence. Deterrence. There's a big difference, Mark. Big difference. Had Joe Biden had a bilateral exercise with Ukraine in the summer of 2021 with the 18th Airborne Corps doing an airborne drop with Ukrainian special forces, there would not be a war in Ukraine. Strength, commitment, resolve in the face of tyranny and aggression. It works. You frighten the bully. You stand up to the bully. But no, nope, Joe Biden simply ignored the 70,000 Russian troops moved to the border, ignored the development there until his approval rating dropped below 45%. And suddenly it was Russia, 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 all the time, every day. That's the truth of the matter. China is very polluted, Erica, but 83 of the top most polluted cities in the world are in India. Yep. Yeah, reduce your resolution. That might help, Charles. They do not isolate when diagnosed with TB. Hence, tuberculosis is spread through the air when a person with untreated TB disease, the huge lungs cough, sneezes. Yeah, no. Look, we... Um, excuse me. We used to deal with leprosy by having leper colonies. In inhumane, mean, cruel, but effective. You can't spread leprosy if people can't come in contact with you. Uh, there are multiple strains of TB, not two strains. We have we have multi-drug resistant TB versions. We have extreme drug resistant TB versions, which there's nothing that, that can cure it. Um, cocktails can help, but they don't cure it. Um, yeah, so yeah, I'm just shocked that after all the years and all the places I've been, particularly in Africa, that I didn't get exposed to TB. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. Right. Be sure to hit the like button, folks, if you don't mind. Sister is a CDC. I'm going to ask her. She is against jabbing. Hmm. Hmm. TB is still contagious like most other things. Well, latent TB usually isn't a problem. Why do we continue to help people who do not want to be helped? Move on to people who want to be helped. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he says, yeah, yeah, leave Africa to rot. Yeah, no, I mean, I, why, why do we help people who, who work actively against us? I mean, South Africa's ANC actively works against U.S. interest. And finally, after four years of me railing about it, people are paying attention. Probably not because of me. Is Pierre Orban here? I didn't see Pierre. Welcome, Pierre. Good to see you there. Steve is here. Use Rand 500 water. Pay 1500 for... Oh, my goodness. Uh, Ashley. All right. Oak Fenter's here. Debbie. So few people have respect for our country. Let's stand in line, starting with Beckett Silly. Yeah. There's Pierre Orban. Welcome, Pierre. Sorry I missed you earlier. I think I've caught everybody in the chat now. I hope I've caught everybody in the chat. Excuse me. All right. Moonbase ZA is back. Hey, good to see you. Where have you been, man? I thought, you know, when people disappear for a long time, we think the worst has happened to them. There's Arctic. Again, the U.S. Armed Force, the biggest weakness is the White House. Your enemies know this. Agreed, Arctic. I think we're 100% in agreement there. It's a White House. It absolutely is the biggest weakness of our military and our national security. Yep. Uh, TB vaccine, how long does it last? Uh, I don't know. I have not been keeping up. Sorry, my chair felt like it was loose. I have not been keeping up on developments with the tuberculosis vaccination. I was more interested in the malaria jabs that are coming out. Um, so, yeah. Malaria is a much bigger problem than tuberculosis, although tuberculosis is very evil too. Yeah, housemate on the farm had TB and HI. I often hugged her. I was treating her. Yeah, um, yeah. the co-infection from TB and HIV is particularly insidious and very prevalent in Southern Africa, especially in South Africa. Excuse me. Yeah, so it's a real problem. But I don't know the answer for that, Carlos, how long it lasts. Um, if it's a vaccine, it should last forever, right? Well, I mean, no, not necessarily. It could last for 10 years or something like that. It's a good question. Good question. I have to take a look into it and learn more about it. So, can't comment now eating the crispy pork rasher I cook, says Mark. 
Hardy says it's cold as F in the USA. Florida, not so much. It's it's fine, man. It's fine. What's the current temperature? Let me see. Current temperature is 41 degrees. Okay, it's climbed up a little bit. It's getting warmer out there. 41 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. What is that? What happened there? Shoot. This thing cycled through. Come up back here. All right. So, yeah, yesterday I did a commentary after listening to the opening arguments in the case before the Supreme Court regarding the government's abuse of the Constitution using third parties as agents of the government to censor American speech. And I didn't feel at all comfortable about where that was headed, folks. I got the impression that Judge Amy Coney Barrett, Sotomayor, Ketanji Brown-Jackson, and uh, who are the other ones? Elena Kagan, and of course, the turncoat himself, Chief Justice John Roberts. Those five judges all seemed in favor of government censorship of free speech. Yeah, the arguments they made indicated to me that they were going to destroy the Constitution. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. And again, that was just the opening arguments. <clears throat> My take, Chris, you're going to take this vote. Well, I hope so, but there's a lot involved in that. So, last leprosy colony in South Africa is down in Transkei, a beautiful location. Actually, acutely spent my 21st there. Huh. Hmm. Recovering from no water in Randburg. Yeah, Moonbass, no doubt about it. There is no ran water all over, no water all over the high veld and the mid ran. Yeah, it's as cold as a witch's teat, and the poor lambs can't go out to the meadows with their mums. Oh, that's where the lamb story was coming from. They're lambing. Why are they lambing so early? That's kind of early, isn't it? It was hot in Cape Town. There you go. Keith says, I'm not sure when carrying a bell was stopped as a requirement for fixies. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Hmm. Uh, what are you guys talking about there? Anyway. All right. So, yeah. So there we have it, folks. News for today. Uh, 82 people currently here. 69 likes. Can we push that number up a little higher? Not my favorite number. Anyway, um, lots going on as always. So my phone is at 100%, so I can take that out and stop charging it. Just when the taps start working, the power goes out. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Absolutely. Uh, and then if the taps aren't out and the power's not out, you're driving down the road and you're driving on the potholes and not on the road. A new base channel I came across, Citizen Concern. I agree, RJ. Um, I agree, but um, I got no response from Citizen Concern. So um, Citizen Concern, along with that other channel, are doing quite well because they're black, they're South African, and they're speaking largely reason. And so that's why they're getting attention. A shiny new toy in the box. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, Citizen Concern did not, did not respond to my request months ago before she exploded um, to come on the program. And a crossover would be great. Yep. My bad. The debate Chris was talking about coming. Oh, okay. Oh, well, RJ. Yeah, it is disappointing. Um, yeah, look. Um, I, from the very get-go of my program, as long as someone wasn't a racist or a criminal, I would go in anybody's program, answer their questions, be a guest anytime. Anybody asked me to do a collab with them, I did it. That's how we wound up with the Wednesdays with the Colonel with Ronaldo. Um, I created programs for collabs. We did the one with Vina Dutoy. We did the one with Rob Hutchison. We did the one with the Kanako. We did the other crossover. You know, I did so many of these crossover programs. <clears throat> and people have their own objectives. People also have busy schedules. You know, uh, those people potentially are building their brand and don't want a distraction, and that's their prerogative. Um, I understand that, uh, but you know, um, I see shows like the uh, the Lotus Eaters, and um, I like their approach. They they complement each other well, and I'd love to do the same sort of thing. But uh, it's very difficult. Uh, Vinant, we did a show with Vinant, but I'm just very busy, and so I haven't asked him. We did a show in January, um, and I've just been very busy. I haven't had time to do it since then, and I probably won't have time to approach that again until April. Uh, well. Yeah, well, you guys are welcome to go on there and, and mention my name all the time and say, hey, why don't you guys do something, do a collab with Colonel Wyatt? Yep. Um, look, I'm not speaking about those channels. I'm not speaking about any channel in particular, but there's another piece of this too. 
Some people uh, don't want their brand uh, addressed or affected by other people, and that's their prerogative. Other people are quite frankly frightened, frightened of being overshadowed or frightened of, you know, um, you know, you know, it's all about them. Not again, not those particular channels. I'm just saying that's a challenge when it comes. It's very difficult to find someone who has their own brand and their own channel that's willing to do collabs. Um, Byron Shepard is eager, you know, he's asked me and when I've asked him, uh, he's, he's never turned me down to do the briberies. Um, but that's uh, something I've been quite busy. But he and, and uh, Roman are having great success right now with their videos. Um, I make a video and it's insightful analysis and then they make the same video. Mine gets 1800 views, there it gets 15 to 25,000. So they've got great traction and they're busy. But Byron has been very forthcoming and helpful and come on the program when I've asked him and he's asked me to come on. He said we should do it again. But uh, we haven't talked in about a month and I think it's because he's very busy with the success that Morning Shot is having right now. Yeah, so the collaboration that Ronaldo and I have is unique. It's 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 not uncalled of, un, unheard of, but it is unique and it's rare. So yeah, yeah. Oh, that thank you, Paul. That's the other thing. Those channels aren't censored. That's right. Um, the South African IP address, South African accounts, and they're not censored. So Dylan said, "Hey, Dylan, how's it going?" Yeah, morning shots fine. They're okay. Um, some of the recent stuff has been a bit wackadoodle. I mean. Um, I think the intent was to be funny, but it wasn't funny. I watched the one the other day, um, their analysis about something and talking about the U.S. and, and about the gray list. And they, they, in my view, clearly don't know what they're talking about. They don't know what they're talking about. They don't understand. The gray list is something that South Africa should have been on 25 years ago. The fact that it took so long is a real question there, not the fact the U.S. So they basically concluded watching that video that, um, and also what they're doing is they're talking for an hour and then they're taking segments of the video and loading those videos up, which I did in the past and it didn't work particularly well. Sometimes it did work. But they said that uh, the reason the U.S. is doing this is because they're trying to control the world. That's nonsense. That's total nonsense. Um, the laws and the policies and procedures put in place that lead to gray listing are things that the United States has had in place domestically for decades. Things we put in place to stop terrorist financing and racketeering by criminal enterprises here in the United States. After 9-11, the world came together and agreed that these sorts of things were necessary to stop the illicit flow of terrorist funds to Somalia, to terror groups around the world like Al-Qaeda and others. Um, and South Africa is a signatory and a participant in that. They failed to uphold their end of the bargain and they've been sanctioned for it. They should have been sanctioned 25 years ago in the year 2000, quite frankly, quite frankly. So the analysis from Morning Shot on that was not correct. It's not even remotely correct. Um, I get the sarcasm, the humor when Renal, or not, when, not Renal, when uh, Roman is making jokes saying America's woke and gay. Um, no, we're not woke and gay. Um, there's a huge pushback on that, a bigger pushback here against woke and gay than there is in South Africa. But I mean, that's quibbling. But the bottom line, is there gray listing comments? No, I don't agree with them at all, at all. Well, morning shot, um, I mean, that's why they talked to Gate McKenzie. That got him a lot of attention. Um, Gate McKenzie gave them. Uh, and listen, um, a lot of South African politicians listen to their comment, their commentary. You don't, you don't see them on there, but they're watching their videos and their videos circulated amongst ANC politicians. And ANC politicians will call them up and say, hey, um, that's nice kind of access. Now, you know, Roman's got a great track record. He had renegade reports before this, tea with Helen. He's been doing this for a long time. But again, I'm not, look, I, for those who incorrectly infer I have an issue with Morning Shot, I don't. I think it's a great program. Uh, I just wish I'd get the notifications for it. But I, uh, I enjoy the program. But... Um, I disagree with the gray listing comments completely. Um, I actually have been involved in that, know how it works, have worked with the Treasury Department, have worked with the Secret Service, have worked with foreign governments on these sorts of issues. And this is just, no, it's, um, anyway, so, but, you know, everybody has an opinion. So glad to see Tabo Besser's saga on Showmax. I didn't know that. Who had a successful coup to build tongue hunt? What? Well, I, I guess that's part of my problem. I'm not trolling. I'm giving genuine analysis, I'm not playing for clicks. So maybe I should. Woke is dying in the USA much faster than Europe, Australia. Exactly. Thank you, Arctic. And the, the comment um, on Morning Shot would give the impression it's the opposite of that. Lost my best friend at 21, two drunk drivers skip. Wow, that was sucks. Wow. Huh? Huh? 
Oh, the fires. Okay. All right. Well, folks, that's in an hour. There's 97 people here. Thank you all for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Uh, don't anybody run off and go tell Ramon and, and Byron that I said evil things about them because I didn't. <laughs> I didn't say evil things about them and I don't have a dispute with them, uh, but I was answering the question and I disagree with their gray listing uh, video completely. So anyway, well, there's an opportunity. Uh, people go tell them, oh, Chris said things about morning shot. Oh, what's going on? Oh, you should get him on. <laughs> you should get him on. Anyway, but um, yeah, but their content is good. It is good. Um, and their their approach now by creating the Retardistan channel, I think is very smart. That way, if they get a strike, it's on Retardistan and not on morning shot. So, but they don't really get strikes. Uh, those are reserved for conservatives largely and in America. Anyway, all right. Morning shot is not like what? Not like what? I didn't say anything. All right. Um, thanks, everybody. Take care. Appreciate you being here. And have a good day. I'm off. So what's this? Have a good afternoon. Okay. All right. You're welcome, Wes. Thank you all so much. Cheers. Thanks for being here, folks. I hate to go with an audience of 93, but I hope you enjoy the program. Again, I have lots of commitments, and I didn't have the hour to do this, but I did it. But I did it. Thanks, everybody. Cheers. We'll catch you later. God bless.